Now there's every chance you've been sent here by a loved one because you're a keen baker, but you haven't got the dough balls to back it up. So this video is gonna show you all the tips to making a classic white bloomer loaf, and then we'll use it in the perfect grilled cheese sandwich. Because let's face it, everyone loves the smell of freshly baked bread, but yours stinks. Oh. A grilled cheese sandwich, and you know, it doesn't get much easier than that. It's bread, it's cheese, it's butter, it's pretty much it. However, you guys suggest that you make it a little bit more difficult for me, and I learn how to make my own bread. So here we go, homemade grilled cheese, let's go. So we're gonna make a basic bread dough. And once you've nailed this, you can make so many different breads. This is 500 grams of strong flour, so high gluten content, makes the bread really, really soft, spongy, absolutely perfect. Goes into our machine, you can do it by hand, but actually, this takes all the fuss out of it. Good. And then the thing that makes bread rise is yeast. So we've got dried active yeast. And all we need to do is pop that into a little bit of water just to begin to activate it. Is that just room temperature water? Yeah, kind of body temperature. So like too hot, it'll kill the yeast. Mm -hmm. Too cold, it'll just take longer. And then season your bread. We are going so basic. This is a white bloomer. Yep. So about a teaspoon of salt into there. Don't add it into the yeast because it has a, a tendency to sort of denature the yeast because of its pH levels. Basically, a bit too sciencey. All you need to know is keep the salt separate from the yeast. Nothing you've ever done has been too sciencey. Right, clamp it down, switch it on, and then pour in this. You may not need all of it, so go sort of seven eighths, leave a little bit back. A bit more. Perfect. Now you can do this by hand, but ideally in the machine it needs about five minutes of kneading until it's soft and elastic. If you're doing by hand, it might take as much as ten minutes just because the way you work it. Okay. Cool. Okay. At this point, it hasn't quite all come back together, so dribble a little bit more liquid in. You can't take it out, so it's best to hold some back and add it more if you need it. Every flour behaves slightly differently. Speed it up, get some elbow grease in there. There we go, you can switch it off. Lift it up. And this is the kind of elastic dough we want. It just slides off the dough hook. And if you pick it up, a little bit of flour if you find it too sticky. It is a little bit sticky. Just so you can handle it. Look I want to have a feel of this because I want to, okay. So it is that sort of like elastic -y, stretchy dough. And when you're working sort of with it, it comes dough. back on itself. Yeah, and it? that's the gluten in there. When you're working with dough, don't touch any part of it for too long. It's like a hot potato, keep it moving and then it will never stick to your hand. So what you need to do is just kind of fold it in on itself. So you're just tucking the inside in. You yep. see the way you're just sort of rolling and tucking. Just get a nice smooth. And then take the bowl off without the hook. Mushroom. And then once you've got a nice round smooth bit of dough, place it into your bowl, cover it with a tea towel, and that just keeps the dust and insects out, but allows the air and the yeast inside to breathe, and leave it in a warm place, like room temperature basically, mm -hmm. for about an hour to an hour and a half. And what will happen is this. It I expands. Cool. You ready balloon, for this? You can even see it there. Yeah. It's really ballooned up, okay. and that's the carbon dioxide that comes out of the yeast. At this point, we knock it back. So literally just pull it away from the edge, and knock all that air out. But what you've done is add so much flavour and lightness into that mixture. Bring it all together again into okay. a bowl. And this time again, you want to tuck the outside back into the middle and then make it kind of loaf shape. We're going to make a classic bloomer. Drop it into there, smooth side up. Beautiful, look at that. And that is your bread. Now, it's important to leave it covered under a tea towel for another hour. Okay. And that'll allow it to double in size and it kind of balloons up. So it'll be right up here. Yep. At that point, you can cut some slashes across it and place it into an oven. Now, the key to baking an awesome bloom and getting the best, what's the best part of the bread? The crispy bit. The crust. Yeah. So, get yourself a tray of water in a hot oven, 220 degrees Celsius, and a tray of water in the bottom. Place it into the oven at 220 cook it for 15 minutes, okay. then without opening the oven, just turn it down to 180 and cook it for another 25. So it needs 40 minutes in total, 15 minutes at a high temperature, 25 at a low temperature, and the pan of water in the bottom kind of helps steam and create an amazing crust. And then we can use it to make the best grilled cheese sandwich ever. White bloomer made, and remember, once you've nailed this bread recipe, you can do so many different things with it. You can add so many different flavours, make it your own, shape oh. buns, rolls, plats. We've gone for the classic. I'm going to slice two doorstep sized uh, slices out of this, good sort of two centimetres thick, and you're going to get the cheese ready. Two cheeses, you guys said mixture of cheese is good, so cheddar and gruyere. If you grate those up, 
we have cheese. Awesome. Now remember that pan of water we had in the oven? Yeah. That's what gives you that amazing crust on the bread. Oh. Try that. I'm not sure much beats <laughs> fresh bread. Bread is the death of me, seriously. I literally sometimes sit in on a Saturday and eat a whole tiger loaf. I can't wow, be good that's a good night in. Now, for the inside of the sandwich, open it out like a book, and on the inside, I want you to spread some mustard. So this is English mustard, it's quite fiery, just a little scratching, but it really helps with the cheese. Plus, when it melts and goes all gooey, you get that little line of yellow mustard kind of oozing uh, in there as yeah. well. The Gruyere is really stringy, the cheddar is full of flavour, so we're going to pile that on top of one side of here. And then a couple of other flavours that you guys suggested, a pinch of oregano inside, like so, mm -hmm. and black pepper. Beautiful. Lid back on, and then the key to grilling the awesome grilled cheese sandwich is pan fry. So we're not actually going to grill it. There's a severe lack of grill there. Yes. Um, however, the important thing is not to pan fry it in oil or butter, but to butter the bread. So soften butter ah, with a pastry brush. To recap, mustard on the inside, butter on the outside, then into the pan. Butter side down. There we go. And then you've got a whole other side that also needs buttering. The key here, dry non-stick pan, not too hot. You don't want that bread to burn before the cheese in the middle has time to ooze. So, a medium heat, and you want to give it about three, four minutes to go beautifully crispy and golden on one side, then we can turn it over. After a couple of minutes, we can turn this, and what you're looking for is that. Oh, yes. Golden, crispy, and for the last minute, just pop a lid on. And what that'll do is trap in all the steam and heat and make sure the cheese is super oozy in the middle, but it will still be crispy because you're frying it on either side. And here we go, and it might sound like a lot of effort, but this is the best version of the simplest comfort food ever. Listen to this crunch as we cut into it. Oh, and look at that cheesy goo on the middle. You can see the mustard in there. Serve it with a chutney of choice, just for a little bit of tartness, but that is an incredible grilled cheese sandwich. Sorted. Get your chops around that and tell me, is that one of the best cheese sandwiches you've ever tried or what? I will try it. I'm going to put this in my happy place. Oh, man. That is incredible. Little flecks oh. of flavour. So good. Now, if you guys know anyone, friends or family, who consider themselves kind of master bakers but haven't cracked the perfect loaf, then please do share this video with them so they can see how to make an amazing bloomer and then use it in a cheese toasting.